Soaking the bee quip strips like these is easy and today we're going to show you how to soak them with a solution of 40% oxalic acid and 60% glycerine. You need a uh, suitable tank like this with a, with a water jacket and thermostatically controlled to keep it at the right temperature. The outer jacket is filled with water through the inlet there and you can see the water level is up to here so that means it's safe to turn on. So we're going to plug it in. The uh, red light has come on and it's on off at the moment. So I'm going to turn this up to that just come on because it's, it's clicked into heating. So we'll set it at uh, 58 degrees Celsius on the knob there. So while the tank is heating up, we can add the glycerine. So the glycerine is supplied in jerry cans, 25 kilograms each. Um, so when you get a new one, it's quite good to make a mark where the 25 kilogram mark is. And then that can be just tipped straight in. Right, so that is empty enough. Now we need another 12 and a half kilograms. So first we'll um, tear it with the funnel in. So we've got the scales here, we're gonna go tear. And now we're going to put in 12 and a half kilograms. Okay, so we've got 12.5 kilograms. So while we've got the right amount in there, we can actually make a mark at the 12.5 kilogram level. So next time you don't have to weigh it, you know, you just fill it up to there and it'll be exactly the right amount. Okay, so now we have got 37.5 kilograms of glycerine. We can leave that heating for a few hours. Doesn't matter if it's all day and we'll come back end of the day to put the acid in. Okay, so we've got the glycerine heating this morning. Now it's about five o'clock, and so we're gonna just check the temperature. A lot of different thermometers, but this is a nice one that's easy to use. So that's um, showing 50, 52 degrees Celsius. Um, so you can get a little bit of variation with the thermostats. So this is set on 55, so we can afford to go up to about 61, and that um, is likely to take it back to about 58. We try to keep it under 60 degrees. So now we're going to put the oxalic acid in to the, uh, with the glycerine. And um, before we do that, we need to have the right PPE, which is overalls, eye protection, nitrile gloves, and while handling the actual acid, because it can be dust, you need a dust mask. We need to have a, a bucket of water and a cloth just handy to, in case there's any spills or we get acid anywhere on us, it's very quick and easy just to wipe it off with water. Very simple. Also, you can wash our gloves in it. But before you put the acid in, you need to, this can be a bit lumpy, so you just need to break up the lumps. Now that we've done that, now's the time to put on the dust mask.
with that done, we can take the mask off and um, we'll leave that overnight for heating and dissolving and come back at seven o'clock in the morning. What we've just made up, that recipe is enough to fill two soap bins with 480 strips in each bin. And then what's left over in there should be stored in a pail like that for a future batch. If you want to add a bit of insulation, if you get a good thick towel and double it up, just chuck it over, oh, keep the heat in. Okay, so it's uh, about seven o'clock in the morning. The solution has been heating overnight with the thermostatic control. So we're gonna have a look at it and see what it looks like and take its temperature. Um, PPE for this stage is um, overalls, eye protection, nitro gloves. Now we'll just double check the temperature, see what it's got to. So that's sitting at um, 55 degrees and um, 55 to 56, which is great. Um, the knob, the knob down here on the thermostat is saying about 61. So you get a little bit of variation. So it's good to know what your tank is doing. So from now on when we use this tank, I'll always be sitting there up to about 61, because um, we know that this will get up to about 55, 56. Um, it's good to keep it under 60 degrees. If you go, if the solution starts going over 60 degrees, the oxalic acid can start to bubble a bit, and that's when you can start getting gases coming off. So we keep it below 60 and we're safe, and it's all very easy to manage. Okay, so now we'll give it a good stir. A um a piece of timber like this, which is about 75 mils by about 20 mils, is an excellent stirrer and about a metre long. Just scraping a little bit off the sides. So that's all that's required for now. Okay, so we've stirred the solution for every, every 20 or 30 minutes for two hours and it's all come up nice and clear. So I can see, it's just like, it's like sugar syrup. It's, um, you see right to the bottom, there's no crystals showing at all. So the next thing is to um, remove the solution that's in this outlet here that could have undissolved crystals. Do about a litre, half a litre, it's enough. And then pour it in here very short time that'll be all dissolved in the solution. So this is the rack set up with the strips. There's 80 strips in each slot which is how they're packed and so there's 480 strips there. Put the two aluminium strips through like that. That will go in there and then to stop it all floating up high just put a couple of packers, which are about 75 by 25 millimeter. There, like that. And then we flood the strips, and then after that, we'll put a bit of weight on them to stop them floating. If it's got quite a way to travel like that, you can actually, um, it's quite good to have a bit of tube and uh, it just gives a better control of the flow of the solution.
we fill it up till it's about 20 millimeters from the top edge just here then we can put the packers on and we want to keep all that submerged so here's an end plate off a bee box about 1.25 kilograms is, a, is usually good a bit of glycerine there so that's um, just keeping it all submerged and um, you can see how it's floated right up and there's like a hundred millimeters gap below it so that'll expand downwards while, while the strips are soaking it's important to keep it in a warm room and um, this time of year in New Zealand it's still wintry so we will have a heater going just on first setting thousand watts is plenty and it's got a thermostat so if it gets too hot it's going to turn off it um, just keep this area reasonably warm and uh, the strips will soak up better right so this is 24 hours later after soaking the strips so now we're going to see what they look like and how much they weigh um, we've had the heater going overnight so this room is kept around 20, 22 degrees Celsius. The lid that comes with the bins is a really good um, place to put the dripping rack. Now what I'll do is I'll just count out 10 strips and weigh them on the scales. What we're trying to achieve is the strips to weigh 34 grams each. So that comes to 33.9, which I'm very happy with that. This, the cardboard weighs 11 grams, so that means we've got 23 grams of solution in each strip. Okay, so now we can put the strips, we've got the right weight, we can put the strips straight into the bag. have the front the top just peeled down a bit like that so you're not getting solution on the ceiling surface so that's all 80 strips in the bag um, they will weigh 34 grams each that means that bundle of 80 will weigh 2.72 kilograms so now what I normally do is repeat for the other five stacks of 80 and then when we take my gloves off and I can seal up the bag because I'm not touching any of the solution and then that bag can go into storage good for up to 12 months if it's kept in that um, airtight condition. And that can be stored in a bin or a box. Banana boxes are great for storing these and um, the residual liquid that you can see, the strips will keep absorbing that in for the next week. So it's good to keep that in a warm place for the next week and um, they'll actually keep expanding a little bit more and absorbing up all that solution so that after a week when you pull them out they'll appear virtually dry. And it is a great idea to write on the packet, on the bag, the date that they were produced.
So we've got the bin here with the leftover solution after doing the 480 strips and uh, we're going to pour that into a pail. A nice open top pail is great and it's, it's good. It's good to do it before any acid starts settling out of the solution. So that is a 20 litre pail. The leftover solution needs to be kept in a airtight container and that can be when you have enough to fill up a tank you can do a separate batch of strips with leftover solution. The key thing is when, when the solution is used out of a pail like that um, it is very important that you don't just use half the pail, use the whole pail lot because um, if the acid has settled out, the top half could be just glycerin. So it's very important when you pour that into the tank, you use the whole contents and scrape any acid off the bottom so it stays at the 40% strength.